Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing these delicious and flaky gyne style pine tarts. These right here consist of a sweet pineapple jam encased in a buttery and flaky dough. And this right here is perfect with your next cup of tea or cup of coffee. Definitely give this recipe a try. And if you're interested to see how I put it together, then keep on watching. All right, so the first thing that we want to start on when making our pine tarts is make that pineapple jam that is going to go in the center of the pine tarts. So I'm going to be using fresh pineapples today. This part right here is totally optional. If you wanted to use canned crushed pineapple, feel free to do that. So I've got my mom here in the kitchen today helping me out with this jam. She's the one that is cleaning the pineapple and peeling it and removing the core and dicing it up into chunks. A big tip that I have for all of you whenever making pine tarts, especially if you're using the fresh pineapple, you need to make sure to cut out all of those little brown pieces or the little brown eyes that are inside or the outside of the pineapple. And when you're removing the core, make sure you remove it all or else you're gonna get a very woody texture in your pineapple jam. But once you get all of your pineapple peeled and chopped, you're gonna go ahead and put it in your food processor or your blender and you're gonna go ahead and blend it until it is a nice, fine pulp. And you're gonna see in the video here that I'm making a lot of jam. The reason being is because I wanted to make a big batch to keep it in the fridge or you can also keep it in the freezer. So we're gonna go ahead and pour all of that pineapple puree inside of our pot and we're gonna turn the heat on to a medium, medium high heat and wait for it to come up to a simmer or a boil. And right as your pineapple is about to come up to a simmer or a boil, you're gonna go ahead and flavor it a little bit. We're gonna be going in with one cinnamon stick and I'm also gonna be going in with some freshly grated nutmeg. As usual, all of the ingredients and the proper measurements will be left in my description box right below this video. At this point, I'm also gonna be adding in my brown sugar I'm using brown demerara sugar just because I love the color that it gives the pineapple jam. But if you don't want to use brown sugar and you want to use white sugar, feel free to do so as well. And once you add in all of your ingredients into the pineapple, you're just going to keep on boiling it down until it is very pasty, it's thick, and it's nice and gooey. So this is what the jam looks like after about two hours of cooking. It is nice and thick, it is pasty, and exactly where I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it from my pot. I'm gonna leave it in a bowl and I'm gonna let it cool completely. Now while my pineapple jam is cooling off, I'm gonna go ahead and start making the pastry or the crust for my pine tarts. So in a large bowl here, I have some all-purpose flour and into the all-purpose flour, I'm gonna be going in with a little bit of salt. Once you get that salt and all-purpose flour mixed in together, you're gonna go ahead and add in your cold unsalted butter. Now I'm using my one stick of butter here and I'm grating it in with my little hand grater. The reason why you wanna do that is because I find that by using this, it allows the butter to get evenly distributed within the flour and allows for a better texture. And like I mentioned before, for all of the proper ingredients and measurements and a good breakdown of what goes into these pine tarts, they will be in the description box right below this video. And once you grate or chop all of your butter into the flour, you're gonna go ahead and add in your Crisco or your vegetable shortening. Now, I've mentioned in many of my different pastry videos, if you do not have your Crisco or vegetable shortening, you can go ahead and replace it with butter. And all I'm gonna do is lightly with my fingertips is I'm gonna break in that cold butter and that cold Crisco into my all-purpose flour. And once that butter and Crisco are properly combined into the all-purpose flour, you're gonna go ahead and start streaming in some ice cold water a little bit at a time. Now, what we're looking for when we're making our dough is something not as soft as a roti dough, but also not super, super stiff. You wanna make sure it is somewhere in between. So you keep adding in your cold ice water a little bit at a time until it starts to come together and you can mash it together. So I'm adding in my last little bit of water here. As you all can see, it's coming together very well. Again, you do not want it to be a very sticky dough. You just want it to start to hold together a little bit. And once your dough holds together, you're gonna go ahead and divide it into two equal balls you're going to wrap it up in some parchment paper or plastic wrap and you're going to stick it in your fridge for about 20 to 30 minutes so this way it can cool down a bit. So my dough was sitting in my fridge wrapped up for about 20 minutes and at that point I'm going to go ahead and start making my pine tarts. So again like I said I divided my dough into two equal balls. The reason being is because I find that it's just easier to work in batches. If you wanted to do it all at once feel free to do so but for me, doing it in two batches just worked out much better. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna flour your surface very well, and you're gonna roll out this dough until you get to about 
an eighth of an inch thickness to a quarter of an inch thickness. And once you get your dough rolled out very well, you're gonna go ahead and take a ramekin, a cookie cutter, or any other round shaped item, and you're gonna cut out your circles. Now over here, I'm gonna be making some larger size pine tarts, but if you wanted to make little tiny pine tarts, you can use something smaller. And of course, if you wanted to make bigger pine tarts, you can use a bowl or something of the sort to make them larger. And once you go ahead and get your little pieces of dough or your rounds cut out, you're gonna go ahead and fill them with your pineapple jam. As you all can see here, I'm using a small ice cream scoop. This is about a tablespoon size ice cream scoop and I'm adding in my pineapple jam. And when you get that filling in the dough, you're gonna go ahead and smooth it out or press it out just a little bit so this way it can be evenly distributed within the pine tart. And then at this point, you're gonna go ahead and wrap them in the signature triangle shape that pine tarts are known for. Now, if you notice that the edges are not sticking together very well, you might wanna go ahead and brush the edges of the pine tart circles with some water so this way they stick very well. Remember, if you don't stick them properly, they will tend to open up in the oven. I will be very honest with each and every one of you. Sometimes when I make pine tarts, I need to go ahead and brush the edges with some water to let them stick. And sometimes, like right now, they're sticking very well just on their own. Now, once you get one batch of pine tarts all filled up, it is time to go ahead and put them onto your baking sheet. Now, I always like to line my baking sheet with some parchment paper. And once you get them all onto the baking sheet, you're gonna go ahead and brush them with an egg wash. Now a little tip for the egg wash here. If you want to ensure that the egg wash does not have that rank taste, you can go ahead and just use the egg whites, not the egg yolk, and mix that with a little bit of yellow food color. That right there is going to give you the perfect texture, it's going to give you the perfect taste, and it will give you the perfect color because of the yellow food color. So I'm going to go ahead and paint each one of them very well, very liberally, and then I'm going to pop them into my oven that is at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm going to bake them for about 15 minutes. Now they might take less time depending on how big you make them and they also might take some more time. So as you all can see, these are my finished pine tarts as soon as they come out of the oven. They have the perfect color, the perfect texture and all I'm going to do is remove them, put them onto a plate and I'm going to continue baking the rest of my pine tarts. And after a while, when you're done with all of your batches, you're gonna get a beautiful plate of pine tarts such as this right here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna break into one so you all can see just how amazing and flaky these were on the inside. Trust me, if you follow all of my easy steps with the dough and the filling, you're gonna get the perfect restaurant and bakery style pine tart. If you all enjoyed this video today, please go ahead and give it a nice big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed yet. Go ahead and drop those comments down below. And of course, if you click on the bell notification icon, you'll be reminded on when I post all of my newest videos.